getting started with templates. In this section we will use templates to create flexible configuration files and we are going to extend the NTP module to use a template for ntp.conf. Understanding templates. In this video we are going to take a look at what templates are and we will start working with EPP templates. Prerequisites for this video, video 1 installing Puppet, so VM1 should be running and you should be connected with SSH. So what are templates? Templates combine code and data to render a final document. You can think about Puppet templates like PHP code where you mix HTML and PHP statements. Templates are mostly useful for complex configuration files you would like to manage with Puppet. So for example in the NTP module we've written in section 3 we could change the ntp.conf file to a template and allow specifying the NTP servers. Puppet supports two types of templates. Embedded Puppet templates or EPP or Embedded Ruby or RRB templates. When you're using embedded Ruby templates you have to write Ruby code in your templates. In this course we are going to focus on embedded Puppet templates or EPP. You store your templates in the modules directory templates. When you're using embedded Puppet templates you have to specify if the template has to be named filename.epp and when you're using our ERB templates, you have to uh, use a file name of filename.erb. When you're going to reference your templates in your Puppet code, you have to use the module name slash template name. For example, in the section 3 we wrote an NTP module and when we would like to use the a template for ntp.conf and use it in, the, in our Puppet code, we have to specify ntp slash ntp.conf.epp. So you can skip the templates directory. Puppet is smart enough to find to search for your template in the templates directory. A few words about validating and rendering a template. You can use the Puppet command with the epp face and the validate option to check your template for syntax errors when you are using embedded Puppet templates. And you can also try to render your templates with Puppet EPP render followed by the file name. If you are using variables, which you are going to do most of the time, you also have to specify the values for the variables you are going to use within your templates with the dash dash values option. And you have to specify the variables as a puppet hash. We're going to look at, ex at an example of this in a few seconds. When you would like to use the EPP templates within your puppet code, which is most of the time the case, you have to use the EPP function in your puppet code. So let's look at an ex example of working with an EPP template. I'm already connected to VM1 with SSH. And I'm going to open a new file example.epp. When you would like to write code in your template which does not get rendered in the final document, you have to use the smaller sign followed by percentage. And now you can write the EPP code. EPP supports data types for variables, so for example, I'm going to use two variables in this EPP template. One is $text, which is a string, and one boolean $bool. The variables you are going to use, or the data and the data types, have to be specified between two pipe signs in the EPP template. And I'm going to close the code now. With, this, with the statement minus percentage and the greater sign. The minus here is used so that this line, the white space for this line gets completely removed. If they remove the minus sign, 
we're going to get an empty line here. And because I do not want an empty line here, I'm going to use the minus sign. So now let's write some text, which gets rendered in the final output. So text value is, and now I would like to use the value of the variable dollar text. For this, once again, I have to change to code. And this time I use, I'm using the smaller sign percentage equals. So this means take the value of the variable dollar text. And I'm closing our EPP code once again. So for example, when the text is hello world, the puppet is now going to render text value is hello world. And you can also use, for example, if statements in your EPP code, when dollar pool is set to true, then I would like to render the text bool is set to true. And we have to close the if statement with a closing curly brace. And once again, I'm using minus percentage greater because I do not want to get an empty line here. So let's save and quit now. We can now run puppet epp validate example.app to check if there are any syntax error within our example.app file. So it seems to be correct. And now we can run our template with the command puppet epp render example.app and we have to specify the values for the two variables we've used in our templates. So this has to be a Ruby hash and the first key is text, so the variable text and the value for text is hello world. And I'm also going to specify the value for our boolean variable in the template, which I'm going to set to true. When I run this now, you can see text value is hello world and bool is set to true. When we change the boolean value to false, The only thing that get, gets printed is text value is hello world followed by an empty line. When we look at this example.app file, this is the empty line and the bool is false. So this part does not get printed in the final outputs. We can also demonstrate um, the removing the minus sign. What happens when we remove, for example, the minus sign here. And we render our template. You can see here's an empty line where the statement wa was, the EPP statement. When you would like to learn more about EPP templates, there's the syntax guide where you can learn all about the syntax of EPP templates. And here's the templates guide where you learn everything about using your templates within Puppet.